Hi and welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to continue our VR Maker game series and we're going to look at allowing our gun to return back to its original position if we accidentally let go and also tidying a few things up. Let's dive right in. If you're like me and love everything to do with gaming, game development and new technologies then check out my channel. I've got dozens of videos on how to create your own games and the latest in tech. And if you like what you see, why not consider a subscription? Thanks very much and enjoy the video. Well, welcome back to our VR Maker game. It's been a couple of weeks, just had a few things to take care of, but now should be back into full swing and hoping to get these videos done and get this game all wrapped up fairly soon. So last week we took a look at making uh, the game loop. So as soon as you shoot the start button, you've got a certain amount of time to go through the game and then it ends and you can reset. So nice and simple. Uh, we haven't done the bit in between yet. We've got the targets, but they're not look linked up to any kind of animations, which we'll be taken care of shortly. But in this one, we're going to take a look at a grabbable object, which is our gun in the scene. And we're going to create some functionality so that if the user lets go of the gun, it's going to snap back to its original position so the player can easily find it again in case they accidentally drop it. So let's have a quick refresher. Let's have a run through and see where we are. So in our scene, we've got our hands. We can pick up our gun. I'm going to let go of it very carefully. You can see it just falls back anywhere, where you, wherever you let go, and which is what we're going to fix. We always want it to come back to a certain position. So we've got our shoot to start. So we can shoot that. You get a little countdown. And then you get your targets active and you've got the, the timer there just ticking down. And then whilst we're shooting all these targets, various animations can be playing out uh, to make it really engaging. So let's look at creating that functionality so that when we let go of our grabbable object, the gun, it goes back to its original position. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to your scripts folder and we will go to our, well, let's create a new folder. Let's make it another one for our functionality scripts. I'm just going to call this one functionality and double click in there and we'll create a new C sharp script and we'll call this one return to origin. Go ahead and hit enter. And then as soon as that's compiled, we can go ahead and drag and drop it onto our gun. And then in our inspector, you can see here at the very bottom, we've got our return to origin. So this script is going to allow this gun to come back to its original starting position as soon as we let go. So let's scroll down to our return to origin script, double click it, and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. So now that Visual Studio is up and running, uh, I've got the start and update functions removed from my return to origin script. Um, we're going to need to use a namespace for um, getting hold of, of our XR Grab Interactable using Unity Engine .xr .interaction .toolkit. Uh, and the first thing we're going to want to do is take this um, in steps. So we're going to need to know when the object has been let go. So when the player's dropped it, that's kind of like the first stage is knowing that. So we can tap into our XR Grab Interactable as some events. If you look in uh, on our on our grabbable object here, we've got the XR Grab Interactable and it has these events. So it knows when um, select entered has been carried out and when it's been exited. And this is what we want to listen to is the select exited event. So we know when the object has been let go. So to, in order to listen for that particular event on that script, we're going to need to put a variable in here. We'll make it a serialized field. It's going to be of the type XR base interactor. Oh, XR base interactable. And we'll call this grabbed object. Like so. And this is, we're going to drop in our um, XR grab interactable into this slot in a second. You'll see it pop in in the inspector. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. So go ahead and save. So if you scroll down, you'll see we've got our return to origin script here and the grabbed object waiting for us to populate the variable. So if we scroll up where we've got our XR grab interactable, we can drop that right into that slot and we're good to go. So I'm back in Visual Studio. Now we've got that in there, we want to listen to the select exited event. And to do that, we can use our on enable method and we're going to say grabbed object dot select exited dot add listener. And then we just want to create a method here, which we're going to make in a second. 
and this can be called object released and then finish off with a semicolon this doesn't exist yet so you can put your little mouse cursor over it press control full stop and you'll get this box here generate method we click on that one and it's, you can see here it's created that method just below let's also pass it a parameter of arg0 which it contains all the information related to the object that's just been released so here we can see let's just pop in a debug dot log we'll just put in object released and finish it off with a semicolon now this should all work but to make it nice and neat and efficient what we're going to do is copy the entire on enable method paste it just below we'll call this on disable and we'll remove the listener like so and to shorten this if you want to you can go ahead and put your mouse cursor on grabbed object press control and full stop and you get the use expression body for methods go ahead and enter and it's just going to put that all on one line for us make it look a lot easier to read and go ahead and control s to save that i'm using visual studio so for those of you using that editor then you should, you should be able to get that same functionality and i think you can do something similar in things like rider as well so this is the first part of our script just detecting that we've released the object let's go ahead and see if that works okay so back in vr pick up the gun and then if we watch the console as soon as we let go there we go we've got our object released being called there so it knows that we've released the gun and now we can add in some functionality to return it back to its original position so in order to make our object go back to where we need it to be we need to actually get a position for its return so for that we're going to use a pose which a pose is a representation of a position and rotation in 3d space so it contains a dot position and a dot rotation in that pose so we can use that pose and we'll call the, that pose origin point and this is private this is all that's kind of implied using this kind of syntax you don't need the private keyword but to make it clear for those of you that are learning what it is i can pop it in there just like that so th this origin point we now need to set we've got a variable but it's currently empty null so to populate our origin point we're going to use our awake method and we can say that our origin point dot position is going to be equal to this dot transform dot position and finish off with a semicolon then when we've released our object we want to return the object back to this point in space our origin point so we can say this dot transform dot position is equal to origin point dot position and we could even do the rotation as well in a second but let's go ahead and see that in action go ahead and hit the start button and now we pick our object up and we let it go over here see it pops back oh whack the microphone which is cool it's always going to return home no matter where i try and drop it you can see here the rotation's all off and it doesn't snap it back in, in into our position exactly so we want to bring in the rotation as well and then we'll probably need to deactivate the Jesus, deactivate the rigid body for a second until it snaps back into position then we can turn it back on again let's go ahead and look at the rotation and we can use our pose for that as well so we can say origin point dot rotation is equal to this transform dot rotation and then when we want to return our object we can say this dot transform dot rotation equals origin point you guessed it dot rotation so before we move that object we probably want to turn off the rigid body and we probably also want to turn off the collider uh, and to do that we could cache the rigid body if we wanted to so and by caching that i mean we create a, vari a variable at the top of type rigid body and get the component in our awake method which would probably be the most appropriate way to do it or we could use get component down in here and um, let's do it the right way let's let's go ahead and create a private rigid body and we'll just call this rb for rigid body and in our awake method rb is going to be equal to get component rigid body like so and then when we want to turn it off we can say rb dot we'll just make it sleep so 
Turn it off for one frame. And we want to turn off our collider. And we can do the same as we did for our rigid body. We can cache it. I can show you the other way of doing that. Just so we can see all our, all our options. We can say get component collider. The collider attached to this game object dot enabled equals false. So we turn off our rigid body, turn off the collider, move the object, and we want to turn everything back on again. So we get our rigid body, wake him up, and we'll turn back on our collider. So we can copy this whole thing and paste it there. Apart from that, put that to true because we want it back on. So now let's give that a go and see how we're looking. Okay, so let's pick up our gun. And then when we let go, you see it snaps back to its position. Falls over there, that's just because gravity is enabled on the rigid body. You could actually turn off um, so it doesn't fall down. But you can see it's always snapping back to the right position and the right rotation. No matter which orientation we hold it, it's going to snap back where it needs to be. So if the player gets a bit carried away and they let go of the gun backs, and it's always going to come back here. But because when the player lets go of their gun, it snaps back straight away, we don't actually need use gravity. So we can go ahead and turn that off. And then on the object, when we, when we let go and move it back, it's going to float away, which is awesome. So I'm going to say, it's kinematic. It all still works. When we let go, it's just going to go straight back to where it needs to be. No wobbling around. Really accurate. If your objects do require gravity and they don't need to be kinematic, then in your script, you would just disable all that functionality like we have here uh, and then turn it all back on. So the second you let go of your object, you you uncheck the box for use gravity. So you would say like rb.useGravity equals false, like so. And then as the second it's back into position, we turn everything back on and it should behave as expected. And the same for his kinematic as well. You just activate and deactivate that accordingly. But this is perfect for what we need. For any objects, you don't, you don't, if you wanted the object to fall to the ground, you could put like a little bit of a timer in here. So let's say the, the player lets go of an object, you want to see it fall and then like a couple of seconds later, move back into position. You, know, just, you could just add a co-routine in here, which was a little bit of a timer, uh, and then it would call the rest. Then the rest of this method would run after that. But from our little game we've got here, this is going to be perfect. We've let, we can let go of our object. It's going to move back into position, and the player is always going to know where the important items are. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it and found it useful, and um, it's going to help you make your own games in some way. But having that nice functionality where for the important objects, if the player loses them, it's always going to go back to a certain position. I think it's really important in this situation because that's a key component of our game. So in next week's lesson, what I think we'll do is when you shoot a target, you see the score come up on the screen and that also gets stored in the, um, in the game manager and then displays your score at the end and stores it as your high score. If you found this video useful and you've enjoyed watching it, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video, it'll really help me out. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.